Hello, it is Direct Mail, Monday, October 23rd, 2023. Steve Cypress here, and unfortunately, a not-so-great example of a local business doing some direct mail uh, marketing or advertising, if you will, here in the Phoenix Scottsdale area. And I hate to see it because I love all small business owners, and I love the fact that at least they're giving it a shot to send out some postcards and do some direct mail. And I think that direct mail works so well, uh, the best of any any type of advertising or marketing you can do, especially for a local small business, that even this really, uh, I mean, I'll just say it straight out, this crappy postcard, uh, I hope it made them money. But extremely easily, the results, uh, the money, the phone calls, the appointments, the uh, basically the, the money coming in from this postcard could easily be 5, 10, even 20 times as much with a few small changes. So let me show you. First of all, it's the headline, Plumbing Emergency Question Mark. Now, terrible, terrible headline. That's a great headline for a Yellow Pages ad or for a Google AdWords, right? Pay-per-click Google ad. Somebody says, man, I got a plumbing emergency. Let's go to Google, type in, I need a local plumber. I got a plumbing emergency, boom. Or in the old Yellow Pages days, they're still around, by the way. I have clients making a killing in the Yellow Pages. By the way, if you want to know how to improve your advertising and marketing so you're making more money than you could ever imagine, I got a free video for you at www.thewowstrategy.com. You can leave out the exclamation point, thewowstrategy.com. will help you not make mistakes like this. But when people are in an emergency, they'll search for the emergency service. A postcard, does it, think about it. Does the business owner who sent this really think this is going to land on exactly the day at exactly the time somebody's plumbing just sprung a leak? Somebody's toilet just got clogged beyond control. Somebody's whatever pipe is leaking, bursting, the disposal's broken. What a, man, and that, they just happened to go get the mail because they said, man, holy crap, this this uh, leak, the water's leaking all over the place. Quick, honey, go to the mailbox. Hopefully there's a postcard there from a local plumber asking if we have a plumbing emergency. Like, don't be ridiculous. At the most, they received this, chucked it in the mail immediately, of course, because they didn't have a plumbing emergency. And then an hour later, something happened, the pipe broke, and they're like, Where, where's the garbage can, honey? Uh, just amazing that today we got that postcard. I mean, that's what the center of this is hoping for, some kind of miracle, that this lands in the mailbox of somebody who is experiencing at that moment, or at least that day, a plumbing emergency. Pure craziness. This is what we call one-step marketing, as opposed to two-step marketing, which is much, much, much more effective. And again, I got a free video all about how you can increase the results of any of your advertising marketing by using two-step marketing. Go to thewowstrategy.com. Two-step says you generate the lead, then you market to them. So if every day you, if you did something to get this person to say, okay, I'll give you my name, address, email, phone number, uh, you have their contact information. Now you can mail them stuff. You can email them stuff. You can text message them stuff. Uh, you can communicate with them over and over and over so they get to know, hey, you're the local trusted plumber in the area. You've sent me the five biggest mistakes local plumbers make, the uh, 10 questions you got to ask before you hire a local plumber, uh, the number one biggest mistake people make when they try and fix their plumbing by themselves, uh, and then general things because who needs a plumber once in a while? It's a homeowner. What else do homeowners need? So all the emails and and direct mail pieces in your newsletter and your social media posts and your texts to your list, uh, if you're a plumber, do not have to be plumbing related, of course. They have to be related to the who. That's the first letter of the wild strategy, to who you want to do business with you, who you want to attract as a new customer or client or patient or member. So think about what they want. They don't necessarily only want plumbing related stuff. They're a business, uh, a homeowner, I mean. So let them know, like, here's 10 ways you can uh, winterize your home for the winter. Here's 10 ways you can improve the landscaping, this and that, to improve the value of your home. They will open your emails. They'll read your text messages. They will read your postcard and your newsletters, every word, because they're like, this is valuable information. And then, then when they have a plumbing emergency, who are they going to call? Not the Ghostbusters. They're likely going to call that trusted liked plumber now who is the friendly nice plumber that helps them out with all kinds of great stuff so the plumbing emergency horrible headline for a postcard and then it's confusing anyway because their two offers are ones for the emergency fifty dollars off the repair and then ones for to prevent the emergency for the drain cleaning which i assume would prevent the emergency that's preventative that's maintenance so 
all over the place about best postcard. There's one thing that's really clear from this postcard, besides the fact that it's not going to make anywhere near as much money as it possibly could, if not just none at all, is they did not get any help with this, not from a competent pro. They didn't get help from me or somebody who knows what they're doing. They just said, let's wing it. Steve Cypress says, direct mail works. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, it works if you do it right. Like most things in life, it doesn't matter how great it sounds. If you don't do it right, it doesn't work. Isn't that the old saying? It's like sex. If you're not enjoying it, you're just not doing it right. So, yeah, direct mail is fantastic, but you got to do it the right way, okay? And then another mistake on the back here. I noticed it has been in my pile for a while. The offers here expired July 15th. Well, what was going on here in the Phoenix area in July of this year? If you don't live here and you don't know, uh, it was a, quote, record-setting heat. Of course, they only been keeping these records for 100 years. So, uh, However, and uh, about 70 years ago, they switched the official spot for the Phoenix temperature from downtown Phoenix, which is hot enough, to somewhere that nobody ever lives, nobody works, nobody ever goes, nobody walks around. It's like a, a corner of the Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, the hottest, driest spot in the whole place. Gee, I, you know, wonder uh, why they do. I'm not a conspiracy theory, theorist here, but that certainly helps the global warming, warming hoaxing, hoaxer, grifters, uh, you know, most people are not critical thinkers. So when they hear that in July, every single day, I believe, except maybe one, had a high temperature over 110 degrees. Most people, again, not critical thinkers. So they just think, yeah, wow, over 110. Not where anyone lives or works or ever walks, but still extremely hot, even if it was 107 or 108. It's usually a few degrees cooler than the BS uh, official, uh, you know, global warming huckster reading. Uh, and yet, with record-breaking heat, what were people doing to quench themselves with this crazy heat? 105, 110 degrees. And granted, it's only for a few hours a day, but that still means it's 90 in the morning. I mean, it was just hot. So people just going into the pool, like running through an automatic sprinkler. Uh, everywhere you go, uh, outdoor restaurants and uh, businesses that have what they call the misters, and plenty of private homes have them, where the, the water just cold water comes shooting down all the time, like, please give me some cold water, it's hot. And so what does the plumbing postcard say? Cold shower again? Yeah, you better believe it, multiple times a day, I love cold shower. Oh, that's not what they're saying. They're saying that's some kind of problem. So they seem to have copied this from a postcard someone would mail in Michigan in January. Hey, is your shower cold? Call us. Like, here, is your shower cold? Better be. In the summer, I got to take cold showers. I don't want it to. I wake up, it's hot. I go outside at all, at any time. I, You know, people, unlike, you know, uh, uh, the northern areas where I live my whole life, we got like three months in the winter every year where we can't do stuff. We can't play golf. We can't play softball. People don't go hiking. Uh, outdoor businesses can't exist. Can't do paving, roofing, excavating, landscaping. All that kind of stuff can just not be done outside. Golf, tennis, jogging, hiking, camping can just not be done for three months. Here we can. We can do everything 365 days a year. It's just in the summer, like in July of this year, when it's extremely hot all month, we just do it very early in the morning. The roofers are out at dawn, so they're off the roof by 12, 1 o'clock, and they're done anywhere before it goes anywhere near 105, 110, 115 degrees. However, they can't wait to take the cold shower. So cold shower again, not a great headline in July in Phoenix for a plumber. So please, direct mail, fantastic, the best bang for your buck you can do. But you got to do it right. Get some expert help. At the very least, if you don't get my help personally, which I don't know why you wouldn't, I give a free consultation. At least if you're gun shy or shy or you don't want to talk to I understand you think I'm going to sell you something, which I'm not. Uh, go to the wowstrategy.com. I love small business owners, all about anyone gets on my calendar for a free consultation. And I don't know, one out of every dozens or so is someone I actually want to work with and I'll take take on as a client. But uh, that's certainly not what the call is all about or what that video is all about or books you can read or courses you could take, seminars you can go to. But please, please don't do stuff like this. Plumbing emergency, cold shower again. Cold shower good, plumbing emergency, what do you, I hope you, you, you also think you're going to hit the lottery. If this works to get you a lot of calls to your plumbing business, a postcard that happens to hit at the moment there's a plumbing emergency, I hope you're playing a lottery because you've got about just as good a chance 
of getting your phone ringing with that. Anyway, now, oh, by the way, uh, you know, will people maybe save this and tack it up on the refrigerator? Yeah, maybe. If the offer is good enough, $50 off a of plumbing repair, maybe that someone would tack this up. That's what they're hoping, right? And, you know, other than being facetious, sarcastic, like, hopefully they're not dumb enough to think this is going to land at the moment somebody's pipes, uh, you know, burst or leak. Uh, they're hoping somebody thinks this is such an extraordinarily unbelievable irresistible offer that I just got to keep this postcard for whenever we do have a plumbing emergency. So, I don't know, is $50 off enough to get people to do that? Even if you do that, and that's the game you're playing, don't you realize how susceptible you are to any other plumber in the whole area? Sending out a card saying $55 off, as soon as that arrives, the person that did put this up on the, on the refrigerator goes up, take that one off, throw it out, put the new one up, and then this guy comes back or somebody else, I'll give you $60 off. I'll give you $65, $70, $75, until this ridiculous race to oblivion is concluded with one or both or all the companies going out of business. Because if that's the only way you're going to compete is by making as little money as possible uh, for doing the work that you do, uh, clearly you're not going to have enough margin to... Uh, to make it in business for very long. Cash is the lifeblood of a business. This is not the way to do it. Do something better. I'll show you how at thewildstrategy.com and every direct mail Monday here. So thanks for being here today and I'll catch you tomorrow on Topical Tuesday.